Um, I'm Dr. Neil Cox, and um, I'm here to interview Dr. Christina West. Um, and it's about her book that's come out um, recently, Reading the Salem Witch Child, Guilt, Innocent Blood. Um, importantly, I think we'll probably talk about this at some time. It's part of the Paul Greg Historical Studies in Witchcraft and Magic series, um, that amazing um, uh, uh, series. Uh, I think many of us uh, have, have really, really enjoyed. And all this video is about, there's going to be two of them. Um, we're going to be just introducing this text a little bit. I'm going to be interviewing Christina. And um, then maybe in the next video, we'll talk about some of the videos um, that you can see on this site. OK, so I'm going to I'm going to kick off with some questions. That's OK. And the first the first question. I had some, I had some friends around. You know, um, a couple of, I had some friends around <laughs> a, couple of, a couple of days ago. <laughs> they were they were in a support bubble. It's fine, yeah. And um, and I was talking to them about the book and, the, and that we we're going to do this. And I gave them, you know, the book and, and they were reading it and they they, you know, they found it interesting. But the first thing they said was the guilt of innocent blood. Ooh, like that's quite you know what's that about? And. I've known this title for quite a while, not after, after a bit, like, you, you kind of become accustomed to it, it just becomes a thing. And actually, it's certainly that's a really good opening question. This is a book, The Reading of Salem Witch Child, The Guilt of Innocent Blood. Where's that title come from? So The Guilt of Innocent Blood was my original title for the book. Um, and within this series, um, for, for very, very good reasons, Polgrave liked the titles to be something that tells you kind of what this book does. Yeah. So it's easy for people to search. It's easy for people to find. And, you know, all the key words are right up there in the title. It's about Salem. It's about witches. It's about children. They're all right up there. But the phrase the guilt of innocent blood was one that when I was reading the um, the transcripts of the trials in particular um, and the kind of documents around that, that really, really jumped out at me so it was said in at least two places I'm sure there are lots of kind of Salem experts out there who might say oh there might be more too um, and is it kind of interesting about that that it was a phrase that that seemed to be used you know seemed to be kind of a well-known phrase in a sense so um, it was used towards the end of the trial period and in its immediate aftermath. So the jurors, um, once the trials were over, once the hysteria, if we want to use that word, had kind of died down, um, the jurors kind of were like, kind of, oh God, we convicted all of these innocent people. What have we done? And they kind of put out a statement together saying, you know, we've kind of taken on ourselves the guilt of innocent blood. So the guilt was theirs and the innocent blood, if we think about Lady Macbeth, the blood was on their hands. And this was kind of the feeling here, um, this kind of like interesting bringing together of, of guilt and innocence in the same way. They weren't the only ones to use that phrase in this kind of like explaining what had happened in the trials. Um, Anne Putnam Jr., um, very, very famous figure in the Salem Witch Trials, although one, interestingly, if you approach it through fiction, that Arthur Miller left out of the crucible. Um, you know, he, he kind of like, he did amalgamate lots of kind of characters and stuff, but she was such a big character. She was 12 years old at the time of the trials, and she was one of the very first afflicted girls um, who, you know, accused the first three Witches. Um, so, did you? So is that is afflicted girls? Is that uh, is that kind of the, the phrase of the time? Is it? Yeah, that was the phrase at the time that, that these girls were afflicted. They were, you know, they were displaying um, various behaviour. They were saying that they were being pinched, they were being poked, they were being bitten. They'd be hurried to and fro. They'd, you know, almost throw themselves into the fire. They were being choked, and it was believed that this wasn't the result of any internal illness it was something that was or someone who was afflicting them and they became known as the afflicted girls at the time during the trial and Anne Putnam Jr 12 years old was one of the principal afflicted girls in that she appeared in court um, perhaps most often she her father wrote out the kind of depositions accusing various people because the girls were not allowed to write for themselves that would not have been admissible in court um, and she was one of the principal accusers she accused most of 
the, the, the certainly the condemned witches, um, but most of, of, of the witches who kind of, you know, were, were um, examined and sent to prison as well. And years after the trials, um, you know, she'd been through a fairly hard time. She never married. Many of the, affli the afflicted girls did and many of the accused uh, children did too. She never married. Her parents died quite young. She had to bring up her brothers and sisters and she wanted to become a full member of the church. And before she could do that, she needed to address this issue that as a child, she had in some way deliberately or because she was misled or whatever the case might have been, sent all these people to their deaths. And she made a statement um, along with, with, with the kind of the present incumbent in, in um, Salem Village Church to say, this is what happened. And I regret everything that happened. And she did say that she took upon herself and on the land the guilt of innocent blood. And I thought it was just really, really apposite for this book because it's about children. And there is this assumed disconnect between ch children and witchcraft. Um, as I say, kind of towards the beginning of the book, um, there was an RSC production of Macbeth just a couple of years ago now um, that, that cast the children, uh, cast the witches rather, as children. Yeah. And they were kind of dancing around, kind of sing song, kind of carrying dolls and things. And the reviewers hated it. They hated it. Um, it's interesting. My students really liked it. But, but the reviewers hated it. And it seemed to be this assumption, children cannot be witches. And, of course, literature and history has has kind of proved that wrong but I thought this idea of innocence because the problem with children being witches apparently was children are too innocent they can't possibly be witches and I wanted to think about that but also think about the judgment that is inherent in that phrase you are guilty or you are innocent and of course even in using that phrase those uh, those binaries are really troubled and that's where that title came from and, that's, and, that's and, it's, it, and I can see that you know the very fact that this um, this girls used this phrase, who has um, uh, who was a child, you know, when 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 this was when this was happening, and however much you know she's um, she's sent people to her deaths, that's that's mm -hmm. been that's part of a wider structure, isn't it? But it's also a phrase used by you know those most centrally in power. Mm -hmm. about their own guilt so already we've got um we've got a kind of a phrase that's migrating that's not quite staying in its right place and I, I guess I mean most of what I know about Salem comes from watching interesting programs Netflix series <laughs> <laughs> um you know already that that's that's saying that's saying something different from what might be expected actually about the the men i'm assuming that these are these are these are men you know yes. um that are making these judgments there's a sense of shame there is that sort of sense of shame different from the shame that i'm i'm, I'm hearing you know in 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 this in this girl of course this girl is maybe writing when she's she's no longer a child but is, is that is that a different kind of shame? Yeah, absolutely. Because the jurors were speaking very soon after the end of the trials. And so not speaking. Um, this was a written document mm. that, that was put out under kind of all of their names to say we kind of regret our part in this. But the interesting thing about that statement was it still wasn't taking on guilt as such. Mm. It was kind of like a performative guilt, a performative public kind of recompense but it also didn't say you know what we messed up mm -hmm. we got it wrong mm -hmm. it said we were deluded we were misled so it was very very problematic this whole statement it, it was really kind of you know trying to say one thing while actually saying something else and what it seemed to be aiming to do was just kind of take the heat off more than anything mm -hmm. else. It wasn't a genuine. So one of the judges of the trial, Samuel Sewell, um, he really, really regretted 
being part of these trials at all. He um, he believed that kind of God was punishing him for it. He lost many of his children very young, um, and he believed that he brought this this on himself. So in a sense, this is another reading of the guilt of innocent blood that his innocent children were paying for his guilt here, and he. Um, you know, legend tells us he wore a hair shirt for the rest of his life to kind of, you know, do penance for what he had done. The jurors aren't really doing that. You know, it's it's like when um, the best example I can give, it's like, you know, when you get on a train, remember trains, when we used to get on trains and the train was like half an hour late and then they cancelled another one and everything took forever. And when you got there, they would say, we apologise for any inconvenience you may have suffered and and you know any delay that you might have had to your journey and it kind of is like that it's like they're not willing to say we messed up they're more saying if we might have possibly messed up it wasn't really really our fault but we you know we kind of a bit sorry about it and, actually, and yeah with, with, and, and, and in doing that is is there actually are, are they calling on the same um i can imagine the same kind of language not just of um, uh, you know, illusion or being deluded, but actually the same language of, um, of the devil. Yeah, because, because in saying we got this wrong, in saying these people, these 19 people we hanged and this one person that we pressed to death and a couple of dogs as well, um, they're not saying we don't anymore believe that this is a possibility because to deny the devil was to deny god so the devil was still there but, and it was the devil that had deluded them and of course this is really really interesting because surely the accused witches those who confessed of witchcraft and many many people did confess because it seemed that was the only way to stay alive surely they were also saying that they're being deluded by the devil but apparently that meant that they could be hanged yes but with the jurors, it was like, no, wasn't our fault. And also, of course, they claim that perhaps they were deluded by the girls, by the accusing girls, mostly girls, some adults, but mostly young um, girls and young women. Because that, and that's really interesting is, is that I think I can see that the way the cultural memory of something like Salem kind of solidifies is that there is a really understandable, I think, kind of, pressure to um, make some really clear distinctions between um, these people who have been murdered, you know, um, and the people that have caused their suffering. Mm. And that can, that can kind of solidify into a, a clear opposition between kind of men and women, and old and young and those kind of things. It seems that one of the things you're doing here is reading a kind of a repetition. That that sense that actually there is something inescapable about this, that, 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 that even the moves away, the moves to mm -hmm. claim, um, I'm sorry, it's, uh, it, it's, you know, it's, uh, it was my fault, somehow replicate the very thing that they're trying to apologise for. And actually, both sides seem to be echoing each other. But crucially, that that shouldn't lead us to think that actually this is some sort of like postmodern soup where kind of everyone's everyone's the same and it's all um, everything is kind of everything's fine because, you know, guilt, innocence, who knows about any of these things anyway. There's structures of power here, aren't there? Mm. You know, that, that even when the repetition comes. It, it doesn't come in the same way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and and what that suggests to me is like Salem, you know, since 1692, still in 1692, and right up to the present day, and I'm sure beyond, it's like, it's like something that cannot be swallowed, no matter what, it still remains there. And it has to be dealt with in some way or another it's like every generation every writer every historian every poet every kind of dramatist kind of keeps stumbling over this same thing and the the kind of the pressure and the the desire 
is to kind of solve it, to unravel the knot so that we can move on.